And just be aware that it does not matter when you submit it. We do not care if it's the first of the November or the last day. Just submit it when it is the best representation of you. Uh, we preferably encourage you to submit it before Thanksgiving so you can actually enjoy your Thanksgiving break. And just be aware that the application fee is $70 per campus if you are a resident or and if you are an international applicant, it is $80 per campus. Be aware that there is a fee waiver available in the application. So before you submit your application and after inputting your about you section, your household income, as well as how many people are dependent on that income, you'll be notified if you received a fee waiver. And you can get up to four campuses for free. And be aware that the UCs we do not have early action or early decision for your admissions decision. So you, typically first year applicants will hear throughout March and April and transfer applicants will hear uh, throughout that same period as well. And it is just one application for the University of California system. And you can access the application at this URL right here. And just be aware that once it is just one application and you just check mark all the campuses that you're interested in and every campus that you apply to will receive the same exact copy of that application. And just know that the UCs, we do not collaborate or communicate your admissions decision. So what that means is there's no hotline for me to, um, to communicate with my colleague at another UC. So each campus you apply to has an independent decision of how we review. And just know that each campus um, also can decide how they want to use certain factors. And we'll go over that in a bit. So now we'll discuss the personal insight question basics of the application. So what are the PIQs? There are eight questions to choose from for first year applicants. And just be aware that there are seven questions for transfer applicants. There is one required question for all transfer applicants. And all applicants will be responding to four questions. So transfer applicants get to choose three out of the seven. And first year applicants get to choose any four out of the eight. So no more than four, no less than four. And just be aware that all questions are equal value. So essentially, there's no right or wrong question. Just choose a question that reflects most to you and provide us with insight on your experiences, environment, and overall circumstances. And lastly, there is a 350 word maximum for each question. Again, there is no minimum requirement. However, you want to utilize as many words as you can. Think of this piece of the application as prime real estate. So we typically encourage applicants to respond with at least 250 words. So many of you are wondering, why do we require students to submit and answer the personal side questions? Why is this an important piece of your application? As you can see, there are several factors why. It essentially completes your application. So you cannot submit it without your application without submitting or inputting responses. It provides an additional context. You'll find that context is a huge part of our review process, which we'll share in a bit. It allows you to self-advocacy. As I'm sure you know, the UCs, we do not get to interview you. We do not get to meet our applicants. This is an opportunity for you to share more on what we didn't see elsewhere in your application. It allows you to set yourself apart. As I'm sure you know, the University of California receives over 200,000 applications, and on average, we receive a student applies to about four campuses. So we read a lot of applications, and this is an opportunity for you to really set yourself apart. So this is a nice screenshot of how the application looks. As you can see, this is just an order. The personal insight questions come at the end of the application. So typically, you'll input your about you, your biography first. You'll select your campuses and the majors. You'll input your coursework, your exam scores. You'll input your activities and awards select your scholarships, and lastly, this is where you copy and paste and respond to the questions. So you cannot submit the application without inputting anything, even if you input a period or a word, that will allow you to submit the application. So just make sure that you're proofreading and revising what you copy and paste into this piece of the application. And we always encourage applicants to create your responses in a Word document or a Google Doc, and then copy and paste it later. And just be aware that there is a 20 minute timeout. So if you have not saved your work and you're timed out, your work will be lost. So this is why we always encourage students to type out your responses in a, a separate document. So self-advocacy. First and foremost, do not be able to click that start submission button without typing something. My apologies. And this, 
Yes. So this allows you to identify your voice and what makes you unique. Don't think that you need to have a unique experience in the application. Don't think that you need to be curing cancer or on the road to the Olympics. We understand that at certain ages, you only have certain amount of experiences available to you. So we're really just looking for what's unique from your perspective. Not necessarily what's the most unique standout moment you've had, but what's unique from your perspective. And as mentioned earlier, unfortunately, we don't get to interview you. So really think of your application as a written interview. And as part of the application, the initial piece of the application, we do not accept letters of recommendation. So when you're submitting that application, you're not uploading or attaching any letters of recommendation. So really think of your personal insight question responses as a letter of recommendation uh, from yourself. So this is think of this as an interview where the reader, us, we have these eight questions and you're essentially have the opportunity to choose any four of the eight or for our transfer applicants, any three of the seven. And what's great is you get to choose. So you have the autonomy to essentially prepare for this interview and say, oh, these are the questions that, I'm, that are most relevant to me. And as mentioned, this is an opportunity for you to stand out. So again, we don't get to meet, see, meet you. We only get to have an idea of your school profile. We only get to see what you're interested in studying, how you prepared towards that major, your coursework. We get to see the activities that you're a part of, the organizations, what you do outside of the classroom. But we don't really understand why you want to study that. And so this is an opportunity for you to share that. This is an opportunity for you to highlight what you're most proud of, as well as discuss any challenges that you've overcome or you're currently overcoming. As readers, we only get to see certain highlights of your life. So this is an opportunity for you to really showcase what you're most proud of. And I know many of us come from humble backgrounds, so don't be afraid to boast about yourself, right? As I mentioned, we read so many applications, so this is an opportunity for you to really essentially brag about what you're most proud of, as well as what you're most proud of that you've overcome as well. And lastly, context. You, as I mentioned, this is a term we use a lot in the application. Just be aware that, that your personal insight question responses can be used by some campuses or by their financial aid office to be used for scholarships. And you'll find that context is key. So again, we can only read what you report on the application because your application, your academics, your activities, they're all self-reported. We do not request transcripts in the initial part of your application, where transcripts will be requested later once you've already committed to a campus. So everything is self-reported. So really think of your application as building blocks. The more information you input the application, the better. But really think of it as added value, right? So you really want to input the information that you think will help your, your story, essentially. And just know that we aren't comparing your application to other students. We're only comparing Comparing your application within the context of what has been provided to you. So for example, think of your rival high school. We're not going to be comparing your application to students from your rival high school or your community college because we're only reviewing you with what's been provided to you because the courses available, the opportunities, the academic prep programs, they're going to vary at each school. So just know we're only reviewing you with the context of what's been provided to you. And essentially, we're looking to see what have you taken advantage of inside and outside the classroom for what's available. All right, so now we'll be briefly discussing the prompts. But before then, we want to showcase and share with you what are the factors that each campus utilizes in your review. So first we'll be sharing the first year, the freshman piece. So because many applicants meet and exceed the minimum requirements, Every campus utilizes these 14 selection factors, which is called the comprehensive review. And essentially, all of these factors are, are derived from the personal insight questions. So some of the personal insight questions will essentially resonate with some of these factors. And you can see there's a variety of factors from the academics to the non-academic piece. And we have a variety because we know that sometimes some of you may have more educational prep program experience than others. So don't think that you need to essentially thrive on each of these factors. There's a reason we have a variety, since we know you're going to have different experiences. And for our seniors, we definitely want to be looking at the quality of your senior year. We know uh, this is something you want to discuss. Maybe your PAQ is if you feel that your senior year isn't as rigorous as previous years. And we want to know why. Why is that? We'll notice trends in your grades, both positive and negative. So the peer personal insight question is an opportunity for you to provide that additional detail. So as I mentioned, if, you do, if your senior year isn't as rigorous as your junior year or sophomore year, we wanna know why. And you can say maybe you're participating in an internship off campus, 
or you have a job or you have family obligations, but we wouldn't know that without you providing that detail. So really think of the application. We can't assume anything for the readers. We can only see it as face value. So this is why you need, it's, we always encourage you to take advantage of this piece of the application because it essentially completes the story of you as an applicant. As I mentioned, we go through your academics, your activities, and lastly, we read your responses to get a full idea and picture of you as an applicant. And for our transfer applicants, you can see an idea here of what are the, uh, the selection factors that we consider in your review. You'll see a lot of it is geared more towards preparing for your major. So my major preparation would be those courses needed to complete prior to enrollment at a UC campus. You can see a lot of it is GPA, right? We want to see that you're mastering those major prep as well as general ed courses prior to coming here so we know that you can succeed and thrive. But we understand that your experiences will be a lot different from a high school applicant, right? Many of you may have children, you may have served for our country, you may have be working a lot, you may be a part-time student. So this is why your factors will vary and be different from a high school applicant as we know that you will have different experiences. All right, so this is a screenshot of how the prompts look in the UC application. And what's a nice feature we have is you can actually email the questions to yourself if it is the first time you're seeing the questions in the application. And as you can see here, we do encourage a word count. But again, don't feel that you need to meet that 350 words. If you feel that you're done at 250, then you're done at 250. Don't think that you need to add additional fluff or extra word count, because again, the perfect, there is no perfect response, there is no perfect formula or algorithm. A great response is when the reader has a full idea of who you as an applicant. And as mentioned, you cannot answer no more than four, no less than four. So once you copy and paste your responses with whichever prompt you decide to answer, it'll actually gray out the response. So should you decide to change your response and you want to answer another question, you just have to delete your response and then paste your response to another question. And make sure to click save and continue. As I mentioned earlier, there is a 20 minute timeout. So you do not want your responses to be deleted, so make sure to click save and continue. And after the personal insight question section comes the additional comments. We're sharing this piece of this webinar because the additional comments is an opportunity for you to share anything that you're unable to tell us anywhere else in the application. This is not an opportunity for you to answer a fifth question. So we encourage you to definitely do not copy and paste a fifth response into this additional comment section. Again, this is a, just an opportunity for you to share with us anything that you're unable to do anywhere else in the application. And the additional comments is not a required piece of the application. This is optional. And just again, be aware of the characters. There's a, there is a 550 character count. All right, so now we'll be discussing the prompts. So first we'll be going over the required question for transfer applicants. The question is, please describe how you have prepared for your intended major, including your readiness to succeed in your upper division courses once you enroll at the university. So this question for transfer applicants is essentially, what have you done to prepare for your major? Is it the course or you, the major, the major prep course you completed? Could it be internship you've done outside of school? Could it be volunteer work? Could it be that you're essentially interning or volunteering at a hospital since you want to go into, potentially go into the med field? Could it be just your, your personal obligations at home? And some of you may wonder, well, I actually am applying to different majors at each campus. So if you're applying to a variety of majors at a, at a certain campus, we encourage you to tackle this question from a broad perspective. If you're, again, if your majors will vary each campus. And now we'll be going over the prompts that will apply to all high school and transfer applicants. And since we want to save time for Q&A, it'll be quite brief how we discuss um, each question. So the first one is describe an example of your leadership experience, which you have positively influenced others, helped resolve disputes, or contributed to group efforts over time. So for this question prompt, we encourage you to really just go with one leadership experience, and leadership does not need to have an official title. So we, we purposely make these responses or these questions quite subjective. So leadership could be maybe you're an older sibling, and since you have a lot of obligations at home, you find that you're babysitting your younger siblings a lot. Now that's leadership. Again, leadership does not need to be president of a club or the supervisor at work. Leadership is quite subjective, and you don't need to answer or use an experience for each 
example, for example, you don't need to do, give us an experience of positively influence others, help and resolve disputes. That or is deliberate. So we encourage you to just choose one experience and to answer it to one of the three examples we give you. Number two, every person has a creative side and it can be expressed in many ways. Problem solving, original and innovative thinking and artistically to name a few. Describe how you express your creative side. So creativity is quite subjective as well. It does not have to necessarily mean it's the arts. It's not exclusive to that. It could mean robotics. It could be engineering. Maybe you're really interested in coding. So you're creating a lot of apps or software on your spare time. So again, creativity could really be anything. And, it, and it's really, and these are two part questions. We want to, uh, we're asking you, what is your creative, how to express your creative side and how have you developed it over time as well? Number three, what would you say is your greatest talent or skill? How have you developed and demonstrated that talent over time? Again, another two part question. And greatest talent or skill, you don't necessarily need to receive an award to be considered a greatest talent or skill. For example, I love to sing. I may not, definitely may not be the best singer, but in my eyes, I might be pretty good. So I could definitely use that for number three. And number three, again, is really just how have you developed and demonstrated that over time? For example, Michael Jordan could be arguably be considered the best basketball player ever, right? So, but he didn't become the best basketball player overnight. He got there, you know, what they say is spending over 10,000 hours. So we're really asking you, how have you demonstrated it? How, what have you shown over time? And essentially, why is it important to you? Why are you sharing this experience with us? Number four, describe how you have taken advantage of a significant educational opportunity or worked to overcome an educational barrier you have faced. Again, that or is deliberate. We encourage you to choose one or the other. So either go with an ed educational opportunity you've taken advantage of or an educational barrier you have faced. An educational opportunity, again, very subjective. It could be maybe you're part of AVID or educational prep program at your high school, or it could be an internship after school or part-time, or for our transfer applicants, it could be a work experience or maybe an opportunity that's part of an organization on campus that's related to what you're interested in your career field or your major. And we know that some of you may not have had these opportunities. So this is why we're allowing you to also See, review this answer as an educational barrier. For example, maybe English is not your first language. So having to assimilate to the English language, that could be your educational barrier. But so ultimately, we're looking to know what have you done? So what have the benefits you received from the educational opportunity or the results of overcoming your barrier? And what are the results now? Number five. Describe the most significant challenge you have faced, the steps you have taken to overcome this challenge. How has this challenge affected your academic achievement? So the key part of this question is really connecting your challenge to your academic achievement. We want to make sure you tell with us, what is this challenge? Again, challenge can be both personal, could be at school, and we want to essentially know the steps you've taken to overcome it, and ultimately, how did it affect your academics? And it doesn't have to necessarily be a negative effect. It could be both a positive effect. Maybe your first couple of years in school, it was hard to get acclimated to a new environment. So after, you know, once you've had that easy transition, you can see there's a positive trend in your grades. So again, it doesn't have to be a negative challenge. It could be a positive one. Number six, and be aware this question is only for first year applicants. Think about an academic subject that inspires you. Describe how you have taken, how you have furthered this interest inside and or outside of the classroom. So for the academic subject, again, this doesn't have to be related to your major for first year students. I know sometimes many students are like, well, I'm planning to major in math, but a subject that really inspires me is art. Are you going to question that? So no, again, really think of your personal insight questions as added value. Just be aware that you will not be admitted or denied purely based off your responses. Your responses are purely here to add value to your application, to complement what we've read, already read in your application. So really think of this question as just, what is your most you know, favorite subject or a subject that inspires you and what have you done? So it could be, have you started a club on campus? Have you, it, has it encouraged you to volunteer in your community? Or maybe it's encouraged you to now pursue your intended major. Number seven, what have you done to make your school or your community a better place? Again, community, very subjective. That could be your circle of friends. It could be your club or organization on campus. It could be your work environment or your family, your home. 
Essentially, this question is asking, what problem did you see in your school or your community? And essentially, what have you done to make it a better place? So just tell us what is the issue you saw and how did you go about resolving it? And what are the results now? Number eight, beyond what has already been shared in your application, what do you believe makes you stand out as a strong candidate for admissions to the University of California? And this is really a free for all. Number eight is really that question that if you're unable to share any experience anywhere else in the application, I would say put it in number eight. This is not an opportunity for you to essentially reiterate or kind of list everything that we've already read in your application. Many times applicants will list everything that they've already stated, all their awards, their achievements, essentially they'll treat it as a summary of their application. And you do not want to answer this prompt in that way. Really think of this question as, you know, I have this unique experience, I wasn't able to share anywhere else, so I'll put it in number eight. And we purposely give you this free for all question because we know that maybe one through seven may not resonate with you. And this is why number eight exists. All right, so I know quite quick, we went over each question, but now we'll kind of share with you our anecdotes and suggestions. All right, so as mentioned, the personal insight questions are purely here to add value. So as a, they're there to complement all the other sections of your application. So you your admissions decision will not be purely based on your responses. And this is an opportunity for to validate your student experiences. We know that you're more than a student, you're going to be a leader when you come to UC. So again, an opportunity to highlight what you're most proud of. And, you want to, and for high school applicants, you want to keep this relevant, ninth grade and onwards. If you have an experience that is prior to high school, you want to be sure to state why it's still relevant today. And we really want to make you aware that it's all about content over structure. So what does that mean? So we're not, this is not an academic essay. Really think of this as the opposite of an essay. And I know for, for many of you, it's quite hard because you're all structured to write in an essay format. So this is why they're called personal insight questions. They're personal for a reason. So really you want to use a lot of I in my statements, a lot of pronouns. And this is a lot easier than an essay. So we want to respond as if you're actually speaking with the reader. So for example, when I ask you to answer, so think of me asking you question number two, how to express your creative side. You wouldn't respond with boom, 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 right? You wouldn't respond with sound effects. If I was asking you the question, you respond with, I express my creativity through dot, dot, dot. So you really want to think about content over structure, we're really just looking for a lot of details, examples, for you, and you want to use different experiences for each question. Again, you, we want to get a well-rounded idea of who you are, so try to use a variety of experiences and examples for each of the questions. And structure, again, we don't need a thesis, body, conclusion. We don't need a hook. So a hook is that first sentence that engages the reader. We, you want to omit any of that creative writing, like it was the first day of winter, Snow was falling, the sun was rising. I woke up and I knew I wanted to be a UC Merced Bobcat. We don't need to know that. Again, you don't need that hook because when you're paying that $70 or that $80 for your application fee, you're getting your money's worth. We are required to read everything in the application. And to mystify the perfect four, you're probably wondering what is that? So many students think that they need to answer the four questions that really showcases them, the positive questions. So the perfect four, will be the leadership question, number one. It'll be the number two question, creativity. And number six question, academic subject for first year students. And number eight, standing out. Students think that they should shy away from the challenge, the, you know, the significant challenge or any educational barrier because they think that, you know, sometimes if you have some, um, you know, questions that don't have to showcase the most positive moments of your life, that the reader won't necessarily, you know, that's not what we want to hear. But again, we want to hear everything. We understand that you're all human and you, there's a lot that happens over high school or within transfer, community college. So again, respond to the questions that resonate with you the most. And as we mentioned earlier, they all have equal value. All right, so what are the PIQs? As mentioned, they're purely reviewed for content. Again, what we're looking for is examples, details to complete, to complement your application. And opportunity for you to share context. Like we said, we can only review on you based on what you report in the application. So this is where you talk about those accomplishments, as well as those challenges and talents and skills, as well as family. We understand that many of you will have different, come from different backgrounds and have different experiences. So again, 
share what's unique from your perspective. You don't necessarily need to have those crazy unique moments, just what's unique from your perspective. And again, this is your voice, your story. So use your own authentic voice in the application. Again, we're not comparing you to other applicants. We all know that you will have your unique experiences. And again, use those a lot of I in my statements. They're called personal for a reason. And you want to make sure you focus on yourself. So you don't want the focus of your responses to be on your dog or your grandma, because by the end, we're going to say, yeah, I want to make grandma, but I don't know much about you. So again, I know many of us, it's hard to talk about ourselves and essentially be vulnerable and honest. But you want to make sure that you make the focus and connections on you. And you want to make sure that you don't feel like you need to exaggerate, right? Um, know that when you are submitting your application, you are signing an academic or statement of integrity. So there are some verification processes in this application, just so just don't feel pressured to exaggerate. But what the PIQs are not. So again, they're not a creative writing assignment. Omit any metaphors, similes, like or quotes when life gives you lemons or any dialogue. We, again, we wanna use your own authentic voice. So no dialogue, no titles, none of that. You only have 350 words, so really take advantage of it. And again, it's not an essay. So omit any of the academic essay structure. And don't feel that you need to have, you know, sound very articulate or strong vocabulary. Don't feel that you need to have a thesaurus next to you and try to, you know, input certain words. And a descriptive narrative. What that means is don't be setting the scene. You don't need to provide a lot of that background. Many students, I'll find that they, most of their responses will be a huge background, setting the scene. And then at the end, like the last three sentences is what we're really looking for, where they're actually answering the prompt. So don't feel that you need to have a lot of creative writing. We don't need to be in the moment with you. Many students will think that they need to have emotion. So omit any of the emotions or be in the moment with you. You know, many students will be like, I'm running through the halls. My heart's pumping, so it's stripping. We don't need to have any of that. So again, it's purely content over structure. You wanna to respond to the questions as direct as possible. Like no hooks. You know, and don't feel like you need to have humor. Again, all of our readers will range in age and gender. So you want to keep it neutral as well. All right, so we're coming towards the end. We do have two case studies we like to share with you. So essentially, we will be sharing with you two sample responses. And you, we will all determine if it is a missed opportunity or value added response. So a missed opportunity is essentially a response where the students didn't focus on themselves. They didn't provide much context that we were unable to read anywhere else. So again, think of this as an opportunity to add that additional information. And the student sometimes just reiterates what we already read elsewhere. And they, they focus more on structure than content. So they might include that dialogue or the creative writing. Again, we're just looking for those examples and details and just very direct and straight to the point. A value added response would be where a student is the focus of the response. They share with us the impact they had on themselves as well as they had on students and others, and they provide specific examples. And don't think that if you don't have a value added response that we're looking to direct points. So again, the readers, we're here to benefit you. We're not looking at, for, to find ways to deny you. So again, this is why the personal side questions, they come at the end to complement everything else you've seen in the application. And to add that additional value, we weren't able to learn anywhere else. All right, so we're going to share the first case study. And this case study is answering the first question regarding leadership. So I'll give you a moment to read this. I'm going to give another five seconds. And then we will all decide if it's a missed opportunity or value added response. All right, so yes, I know it kind of clicked it quite soon. So we did deem this response as a missed opportunity. And as I'm sure as you're reading it, you kind of assumed, right? And because, you know, there wasn't much detail, there wasn't, it was quite vague. They didn't really explain what their idea of a leadership role is. They just briefly said, you know, I was here to mentor the freshmen, and it was quite, they had, they were struggling with how to get them engaged, but then they, they mentioned that they briefly thought, oh, let me share my experiences when I was a freshman, and then essentially they're like, we fixed the situation, it was a great day. So they didn't really elaborate on what went wrong and how they found a solution to fix it. They could have provided more details on the role. So essentially, even though it was a decent workout, 
there wasn't much value added. So again, really wanna make sure you're including concrete, specific examples, very straight to the point, no scene setting, as well as why is this leadership role important to you? And how did you benefit from it as well as how did others benefit from it as well? The student didn't really get touch up upon that as well. All right, our second case. So this is answering question number six, which is describe your uh, an academic subject that inspires you and how have you furthered your interest inside or outside of the classroom? I'll give you a moment to read this. Another moment and we'll all decide if this is a missed opportunity or value added response. All right, so what do you all think? Yes, I'm sure many of you thought it is a value added response. We did deem this response as such because the applicant directly answered the prompt. They are able to tell us what is an academic that inspires them. So they were able to say, after taking the introduction to philosophy course, encourage them to get involved in their community. As you saw, it read that they were able to volunteer at their local cancer prevention center, as well as a local library. They want to get that worldly outlook in life. And because of that, they were able to interact with a lot of diverse populations. And essentially, they, it encouraged them to pursue now their intended major of sociology. So they're able to just provide us the steps of how to develop their favorite subject and what came about it. So essentially, because of this, it, they were able to now pursue their intended major because they want to continue providing that positive worldview as well as essentially altruistic environment to others around them. There, so they drew those parallels from volunteer experiences to the academic subject. Very straight to the point, they added, they included concrete examples and they didn't necessarily talk about the theories of philosophy. We're not looking for that, right? You don't need to, to tell us this, this theory on dot, 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 dot. We don't need to know that. We just need to know how it impacted you. So they just told us because of philosophy impacted me this way and this is how I benefit, benefited from it and this is what I hope to do. So again, don't think that you need to have theories on certain, you know, math theories or physics theories. Again, it's more so what are the impacts it had on you. So that is our last case study. We hope you enjoyed those two case studies. Again, just a brief snippet on what we see as value added versus a missed opportunity. We encourage you to take quick photos of our useful resources, both for first year applicants and transfers. We want to be, make you aware that there is a nice worksheet on how, that dissects each personal insight question prompt for all applicants. So you can see it here at the personal insight questions resource link here. There are worksheets. And this is a great way if you haven't already started reviewing the, res the questions and drafting responses, a great way for you to know which ones are most relevant to you. And which ones do you have the most experiences that you feel will best highlight you in your application? And we can also learn more about how each campus reviews applications for both first year and transfer here, our selection processes that I briefly went over in the beginning. To quickly take a quick screenshot of this as well, other resources for both high school and transfer applicants regarding the exams that we do require for high school applicants, either the SAT with essay or ACT with writing. Good luck to all the students taking the SAT tomorrow morning. We wish you the best. Please do get some good rate, great, great rest tonight. And then lastly, here is our contact information. We they want to thank you all for joining us. This is our first webinar this fall for the application process. You can contact our office directly at admissions at ucmerced.edu. And this is our direct phone line to get in contact with admissions rep. Please follow us on social media to learn more about what life is like at UC Merced. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We do not follow back. You could also learn more about should you want to contact us or mail us anything. This is our direct address as well. And just as mentioned earlier from Ricky Hill, our e-recruiter, she did mention that we will be providing you a link to this webinar that is re-recorded. So within a few days, you will receive a link to review this for further information or just to share with your colleagues. And just be aware that we have additional webinars this month as well. 
And now we'll leave time for our questions and answers. Uh, please bear with us as we are reviewing the questions. And myself and Elena and Maria will answer via chat. So this is a great question. Do all UC campuses look for the exact same things and essays, or will some campuses value certain things over others? So again, these are not essays. Really treat these as short answer responses. And yes, all UCs will, re will review them the same way because the, these responses are only here to add value, to complete complement your application. So we'll, we won't be, or as you asked, do we value certain things over others? No, this is all equal value. So again, really treat this as an additional piece of information in your application. So everything is seen as equal value. And this is why we encourage you to really put your best foot forward and really boast about what you're most proud of as well as highlight any challenges you overcome. Because we can only review on what you report in this initial application. When is a good time to submit all the personal insight questions? So you, in order to submit the application, you must copy and paste your responses in the personal insight question section. So you cannot submit the application without your responses. And don't feel that you need to submit your application tonight, the first day it's been open to, to, to file your application or the filing period. Again, submit the application when you feel it's the best representation of you. We will not, you will not get preferred review if you submit it earlier in November versus later in the end of the month. Again, we will all review come December 1st. This is a great question. Are home responsibilities valued the same as extracurricular activities? That is correct, yes. So as I mentioned earlier, leadership does not need to have an official role or title. If you feel that you are unable to be involved in as many extracurricular activities because you have a lot more home responsibilities or obligations, that is what you'll go with in the application. So this is why we have those variety selection factors because we know that some of those will resonate more than others. So these are, this is why a lot of these questions are quite subjective because you all come from unique backgrounds and have unique experiences. Do admissions officers read your PIQs after looking at your grades and test scores? So I will answer only this on behalf of UC Merced. At UC Merced, we do read your PIQs after reviewing your academic courses and grades, as well as exam scores and activities and awards. Again, each campus will review all information, but just know that each campus you're applying to has an ind independent decision of how they review. So this is a question I definitely encourage you to reach out to each campus you're applying to. But specifically for Merced, yes, your PIQs will be read at the end. As I said earlier, it really completes the story and applicant of you. Hi everyone, this is Ricky again. Just a quick reminder, if you have a question, please take advantage of that button at the bottom of your screen that does say Q&A instead of using the chat feature. Thanks so much. I came late, so it could have been covered, but is it bad to talk about your extracurricular activities in your essay? Everyone tells me not to. So this is a great question. Definitely not to talk, it's definitely encouraged to talk about extracurricular activities if you feel that is what you're most proud of, if you feel like that's a big highlight of your academic career. So and again, you said you use the term essay. These are not essays. These are just short answer questions. They're not that structure or format of an academic essay. So if you feel that your extracurricular activities are really the highlight of your high school experience or what you're, or you're most proud of, then yes, you want to run with those experiences. Again, all of these experiences have equal value in this piece of the application. So this is why we give you the autonomy of which questions you'd like to choose to answer. What do you see admissions look at when looking at applications besides PIQs? Like what stands out the most? This is a great question. So again, each campus has the independent decision of how they review. I shared with you earlier, there are those comprehensive review factors. So those selection factors, if, um, they'll, they'll be different for high school and for transfer applicants. So at UC Merced, specifically at UC Merced, we do put a bit more emphasis on the academic piece in the review application. Well, six of the nine UCs will do holistic review. So holistic review means that 
one of those factors will not hold more weight than another factor. So I encourage you to reach out to each campus you're applying to to know, but just know that some of the campuses, six of the nine, will do holistic, where one factor will not hold more weight than the other. And this is purely for high school. Right, Merced, we do put a bit more emphasis on the academic piece. So again, this is why you want to put your best foot forward and really showcase everything in the application, because when you're applying to each campus, we're all going to receive the same exact copy of your application. And for transfer applicants, as you saw in the selection of factors, there is a lot more emphasis on the major preparation as well as you know, meeting the general education prior to enrollment. But we understand that as transfer applicants, you're going to have different experiences as high school applicants. So this is why we, we're also interested in knowing what you do outside of your classroom, because we know that many of you will have a lot of obligations at home as well as work, and there'll be different experiences from a, a standard high school applicant. Specifically for the challenge PIQ, is it okay to imply that we are still going through the challenge? Yeah, so this is answering question number five about a significant challenge that you've overcome. And yes, it is totally okay. And we encourage you, if you're still overcoming this challenge, then yes, please uh, inform us in that response. If my school has IB courses, so these are international baccalaureate courses, but I'm not taking them for external reasons. Should I mention this in the additional comments segment or as an answer to our PIQ? So if you feel that you're, you're not taking IB courses for whichever reasons, as you said, if you feel that it has a huge effect, then yes, you can use a PIQ or prompt. But if you feel that it's just a minor detail to your application, then we encourage you to input this in the additional comments section. So you can input this in the academic history section called the additional comments in the academic history section or in the additional comments at the after the that, that come after the PIQs. Sorry, now a lot of a mouthful there, but if you feel that you want to provide depth on it, then use a PIQ. If you want to briefly mention as well state the reasons, use additional comments. And just so everyone's aware, we're we're trying to get through these questions as quick as possible. And again, we will, these questions will be geared more towards the personal and side questions, the ones that we will be answering. So it's better to be more straight to the point than being creative. That is correct, yes. This is not, or these questions, you do not want to treat these questions like the questions you'll, the prompts will be answering for private school applications. Again, very straight to the point, direct and concise. Omit any creative writing. Again, you're only being reviewed on content, so meaning, your experiences, your examples versus structure, because creativity will come in that structure of writing. We do not want that. And that's, again, this is used for all campuses. Should I start the PAQs without setting a scene or developing a hook? So that is correct. You want to admit any hooks, you know, that first sense to engage the reader. So if you feel like you need to set the scene, provide a little background, that is okay, but just be sure that that is not the entirety or majority of your response. Because again, you know, if you're doing a 50 words, think of it as prominent mistake. You really want to maximize your examples and experiences. For the academic subject PIQ, is it better to give a more general subject like biology or a more specific one like neuroscience, even if you never took a class on it or they valued the same? Or are they valued the same? So again, I encourage you to choose whichever one that you're most that you most enjoy or that has the most value to you. Again, they're all seen as equal value. So if, if you find that the nuances of neuroscience is a little more up your alley, then yes, you can go more into that versus biology. You could, you could start general from general biology and then work your way to neuroscience if you like as well, as long as you can do it within 250 words. Hi everyone, this is Ricky Hill again, your e-recruiter. This is just a quick reminder that we are looking at the timestamp of about 6.53, so we're nearing the end of our session tonight. Just a quick reminder that we do have an application tips webinar that will be coming up next Friday, as well as another PIQ session webinar on the 15th, so please make note of that and register early. Again, this is just your quick warning that we will be wrapping tonight around 7 p.m., and we do appreciate your attendance. Thank you, Ricky. Yes. Can the word count for the personal side questions go over the amount given, or can it only be the amount given? So again, yes, you can only input 
or copy and paste 350 words. So if you have 352, it'll cut off at the 350th word. So make sure you're checking the word count in whichever document you're utilizing. There are many times as a reader, we'll notice that it's over 350 words because it'll just cut off mid-sentence. And you don't want that to happen. If I send my application to one UC, does it send it to all of them or do I need to pay for each one? This is a great question. So when you're selecting the campuses you wish to apply to, you need to make sure you're check marking each campus you intend to apply to. So again, it's just one application. You check mark all the campuses you wish to apply to and your application will be only sent to the campuses you check marked. So, and yes, you need to pay for each additional, for each campus you wish to apply to or if you're eligible for the fee waiver, you can get up to four campuses you can apply to for free for the fee waived. Are there any more PIQ case study examples that we can find online? Yes, there are some available. It is not in the resources page I shared with you, but if you visit the University of California website and go to the counselor conferences, if you just Google University of California counselor conferences guides, downloadable resources, you'll find a lot more case studies that were shared at that conference. And the two case studies that we did share were from that PowerPoint. How large of a part do PIQs really play in admission? Like in comparison to numbers, are PIQs more or less important? So again, PIQs are there to add value, right? So like I said, we can only review on based on what you provide. So really that's why you want to take advantage of this opportunity so they really treat it as an interview because we don't get to meet you. So they play an important part where they add value, but again, you will not be admitted or denied purely based on your responses. And these responses are not a make it or break it. As mentioned, they're just there to add additional value and context there because we can only get so much context from your grades. For example, like I said, we notice these trends that are both up and down your grades, but we will notice something was, is going on, but we don't know what is going on without you providing that context. So think of your PIQs as an additional context. Will admissions officers be influenced by your major choice when reading the questions? For instance, for instance, should I be encouraged to promote myself as that a good fit for the major? Or would it hurt me if I were to talk about an accomplishment not relevant to my major choice, opposed to using an example that aligns with my major? This is a great question. So as mentioned earlier, you're, as if we see your major and we notice that if you're answering number six, the academic subject that inspires you is not related to your major, don't feel that that will hurt you in any way. Again, these PIQ responses are only there to add value. So should, for example, you're applying for math, but you want to talk about art as your academic stuff inspires you, by all means. For PIQ prompt to number two, could a creative side be considered a mindset learned for an activity such as meditation? Yes, very much so. Again, all of these questions are quite subjective. So yes, if you find that your mindset, you know, the, the way you are perceiving certain, certain things is from meditation, then yes, by all means. And that's the first I've heard that in a PIQ response. That'd be great to read as well. If I plan on doing a specific extra cooker in the spring, but I'm not doing it now, should I input it into the extra cooker section? Yes, yes, you very much can if you intend to do it in the spring. How should I approach PIQ number eight? So PIQ number eight is how, what makes you stand out for admissions to UC? You really want to approach PIQ 8 if you have a certain experience that you are unable to share anywhere else, put it in number 8. So for example, maybe you're multilingual, you speak more than three languages, you're fluent in more than three languages, and you don't know where to put that in any of the other prompts, you can utilize number 8. Again, number 8 is purely that free for all. Is caring for a brother after school or playing competitive video games and extracurricular activity? Yes, very much so. So for you being an older sibling, you can call that tutoring. Put that in the application, right? Because you babysitting or caring for your, your siblings, that is time taken away from what you could be doing in other extracurricular activities. You can definitely put that in there, in that section. You can put as tutoring, right? And playing competitive video games. So yes, if you're part of tournaments, if you're winning awards, yes and that's a lot of value to you, you can definitely input that in the extra clicker section as well. For a PIQ on academic subject, can I use a subject like digital technology that is not exactly a subject in school? So I encourage you to stick with subjects that are A through G. So if this is for high school applicants, 
you would want to look at the A3G course list for your prospective high school. And if it is, you know, an A3G course or related to one, then yes, you can definitely share that with us, especially if it's related with what you're looking to go into in terms of your major as, or career. I know it's already 7 p.m. So I just want to say we'll answer one more question. But again, this is available. This will be available later within shortly in the next week or so. And we will have additional webinars as well as another VIQ webinar later this month. So we'll end up with this question. How do I write about a challenge I experienced without making it sound like a sob story? Again, don't feel that if your certain challenge is, is not, again, there's not really such thing like a sob story, right? Because you're just going to be sharing with us your experience as well as, well as what you've done to overcome this challenge. So again, we're not going to be thinking, oh, this is just another sob story. We really just are looking for what is a challenge? What have, you know, what have you done to overcome this challenge? And what is your life like now? So essentially, what is the challenge? How did you overcome it? You're, you're going to provide us with the results. And what is your situation like now? Again, it could be both positive or negative. All right, well, thank you, everybody. We appreciate you joining us, especially on a Friday night. Good luck with you on the application. We wish you all the best throughout the, this month. Again, you have until November 30th at 1159, 59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to submit your application. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This again is Ricky, your e-recruiter. Just one last time for a quick reminder that we do have an application tips webinar coming up next Friday, which is November the 8th, as well as another PIQ webinar on the following Friday, which would be November the 15th. One last reminder, uh, we will be making this recording available 